when you are in the middle of an amygdala hijack and your emotions are just going wild, this part of your brain is on fire. But if you do this one simple thing, you will light up this part of your brain and this part calms down. So I'm going to share what this one simple technique is, as well as show you some fMRI studies that show you how it impacts what part of your brain is being engaged, give you the scientifically proven benefits of using this technique. And I know that this technique is going to sound so simple, you're going to be like, yeah, that doesn't work for me. But I'm going to share some specific techniques about how to implement this technique to help you regulate your emotions. So this technique is called affect labeling. But what that means is that you put into words what emotion you are feeling. And again, don't hang up on me. Stay with me because I will tell you why this works and also what you can do to help it work. But the simple act of identifying exactly what emotion you're feeling, and I know that can be hard for some people, so we'll talk about that too. But that simple act engages your frontal lobe specifically. It engages your right ventrolateral prefrontal cortex. But you cannot actually put feelings into words without utilizing that part of the brain. And this part of the brain is involved in processing emotions, analyzing emotions, thinking about emotions. And fMRI studies show increased activity in this part of the brain when people do affect labeling. And then the right ventrolateral prefrontal cortex, and you definitely don't need to remember the names of these parts of the brain. I have to double check that I'm getting them right frequently. But that communicates with the medial prefrontal cortex, MPFC, and I'm going to show you these on the screen. And then the MPFC communicates to the amygdala. So it's kind of the connector between the moment when you label your emotion. It's the MPFC that then communicates to the amygdala and begins to calm it down. It actually dampens the activity in the amygdala. So most of you know that the amygdala is your sentry. It's the part of your brain that's always looking for danger and yelling fire, fire, fire. And when there actually is a fire, it's great to have the amygdala. It gets you moving quickly to address a very dangerous situation. The problem with the amygdala in current day society is that it's an alarm that's going off all the time when we are not actually in immediate physical danger. So hopefully you've watched my other two videos on the amygdala hijack. And if not, I will, I will link them right up here so you can watch those. But this is the part of the brain that creates the fight, flight, freeze response. It intensifies all of our emotions as if we were under a survival threat. And when we're under a survival threat, we don't really prioritize relationships. We don't prioritize reason, thinking things through, planning, choosing reasonable responses with our words, choosing reasonable actions, none of that. We are just totally reactive and it gets us into a lot of trouble. So pausing and really thinking through what you are feeling, activating these other regions of your brain and your amygdala will calm down. So I'm putting here the name of the authors and the article that describes the research that I'm talking about, just in case you're interested in looking into it yourself. But to summarize the research, the participants looked at upsetting pictures, which activated their amygdala. And then the researchers had different control groups and asked them to do different things when they looked at these pictures. So that people who were labeling what emotion they felt had much lower activity in the amygdala than those who did other types of labeling, say, labeling the gender in the picture, labeling the emotions shown in the picture, and then simply observing. And the researchers also found that there was an inverse relationship between the activity in the amygdala and the activity here in the frontal lobe, so that when this was more active, this was less active. An inverse relationship. So I don't know if it helps you to understand how it works when we engage different parts of our brain in terms of what we want to accomplish and what we want to feel, but I know it's helpful for me to know that there's actually physical evidence that what we think about 
changes what's happening in our brain. We can change which area of our brain is lit up depending on where we direct our attention. I think it's kind of mind-blowing, actually. And in case you are interested, I do have a free webinar on Rewire Your Brain for Joy and Confidence. And I do talk about the neuroplasticity, the fact that we can actually change the wiring in our brain by changing behaviors and thoughts so that we can live a more joyful life and feel more confidence. I'll put the information here on the screen, and I will also link it here, and links will be in the description. Okay, so let's talk about the practical ways to implement affect labeling. So step one is to pause and think about what you are feeling physically and emotionally. Again, in the middle of an amygdala hijack, if you don't pause, you're not going to engage the other part of your brain. And I'm also going to talk about how to strengthen your ability to do this, because I know many of you might be being like, yeah, well, I won't be able to do that in the middle of a hijack. But as soon as you can, pause and identify where you're feeling. And step two is to really be specific about the emotion you are naming. And it's very helpful to use an emotion chart. There are many of these online. I'm going to share one I found here on the screen, which I found at printably.com. But don't just say, oh, I feel bad. Okay, well, how do you feel bad? Or even anger can be very general. Is it frustration? Is it rage? And then maybe there's another emotion there, like think through, is there an emotion underneath that obvious one? Because very often underneath anger is hurt or sadness. Same thing with anxiety. If you label, label it like I'm just anxious, Maybe be specific, describe it a little bit more specifically, and then see, is there another emotion there? We very often feel more than one emotion at once, which can make this a little bit complicated. My step three here is going to be aware if you are feeling anxious about labeling your emotion, because a lot of people don't know what they're feeling, and then they get anxious about that, and then they criticize themselves. So I'm just going to put this right out here. Don't worry about it. You could say, Hmm, I'm not sure what I'm thinking. I think I'm, well, I know I'm anxious. I'm not sure what else I'm thinking. I might be irritated. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit scared. You can elaborate on it. And don't worry. If you don't know exactly the emotion, it's okay. And the more you can either say this out loud or at least say it in words in your head. Out loud, probably best. But if you'd prefer to just do it internally, you can do that too. Use your words, right? You know, we say that to kids all the time, but it's really true. It's just engages a different part of your brain. So that point number three was don't get anxious if you don't know exactly what you're feeling. Spend a little time investigating and be okay with the not knowing. And another aside here, I do have a whole bunch of videos about emotional intelligence, which is really the ability to identify the emotion. And often it's about identifying the emotion under the emotion. So you can take a look at those when you have time, but just also understand, maybe this is my point number four, step number four. It takes time to develop the awareness and understanding of our emotions. Allow yourself to practice with this. Expanding your emotional vocabulary has been tied to more mental well-being. So take the time to do that. Okay, next step. Observe these emotions non-judgmentally. Again, don't give yourself a hard time like, oh, I always do this. Just observe. Try to be as non-judgmental as possible. The other thing that comes up a lot is if people are angry, they'll be like, oh, I shouldn't be angry. I shouldn't be angry. It's bad to be angry. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to feel whatever we are feeling. What behavior comes out of that feeling? is what's really important. And that's what this entire process is slowing down, calming down, so that you will be able to choose an action rather than simply be reactive. So let yourself have the feelings and know that they are separate from the behavior that often comes after them, but doesn't have to come after them. Let me know if that made sense. You can always comment below. Tell me if that made sense to you. I think it's really useful to keep that in mind. And my last suggestion for implementing this tool, which was not in the research, by the way, but I think is really important, is to combine the affect labeling, combine the naming of the emotion with something that is 
physiologically relaxing. It could be a deep diaphragmatic breath. It could be going for a slow walk in nature. It could be petting your animal. If you pet your dog or your cat, while you start to name these emotions, that will be really helpful. And then lastly, as you practice this, notice if it does calm you down. Notice if it does shift how you're thinking and feeling. And actually, let me add a last step here because I mentioned it briefly before. But practice this when you are not in the middle of an amygdala hijack. Practice it on a normal day. Hmm, today I'm feeling okay. But let's be a little more specific than okay. Use the feeling chart to really identify what is it that feels okay? What are you feeling when you feel okay? Or if you're feeling a little low, what is it? So practice using the feelings chart and the labeling of your emotions, not only when you're in the midst of a huge upset. So to summarize for you the key benefits of affect labeling that are scientifically proven, it reduces the intensity of negative emotion. It helps you regain control during very difficult emotional times. It allows you to have a more thoughtful response to a situation in terms of what you do and what you say. And it will help you improve your emotional intelligence, your awareness of your own emotions, both what you're feeling and physically feeling and emotionally feeling. And that has been tied to mental well-being. So you do have the ability to calm your amygdala, to calm your reactivity, and to begin to regulate your emotions. And this will get easier over time. If you did like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, it's a big help. And I'll put here on the screen the other amygdala videos that I have that you might find useful. And you should also be able to find a link right there, probably on the screen, to the webinar, the free webinar, and to a playlist about the emotional intelligence videos. All right, have a great week.